Testing, testing, one, two. Un, dos, tres. Para, pa, 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 para, pa, para, pa. Very famous song. Don't know if you remember it. Welcome back to VR Essentials, where we talk about the practical uses of virtual reality. Today, very exciting video, as we're going to be giving you some insights as to potential warnings about various different brands that perhaps you should avoid or get your money back if you already invested in them. But before, quick interruption guys, just to let you know that VR-Wave.store have a special Christmas promotion going on their website. They have a ton of really cool stuff because today's video, by the way, is sponsored by them. But as you know, we feature them countless amount of times. We actually use their products as well. They have lens prescription lenses, uh, adapters, they have uh, stuff like facial replacement things and all this kind of stuff for both the MetaQuest, also for your HP, your HTC, even the DJI VR headset for those who operate, um, you know, uh, DJI uh, drones and all that kind of stuff. It's both for nearsightedness or farsightedness and also astigmatics, which by the way, I am. So do go and check out the website in the link description below. All right, back to today's video. So let's just transition over to today's uh, topic which is all about avoiding certain different brands. Uh, stories have been coming out. The first thing is, of course, that Meta or sorry, not Meta, Deca, uh, you know, a few months ago, a couple months ago, or so did come out to say that, you know, the, due to certain different things, shortage, Meta's competition, financials, blah, blah, blah. Excuses, excuses, excuses. They basically could not release the Deco gear that they were looking to release and they were looking at potentially Q3 of 2023. I'd also like to point out that in one of the very recent video, uh, so if I go to get Deco gear uh, financial pitch presentation that you can find on YouTube. By the way, we did do a video about this. Uh, they also said that the price uh, would be, uh, this is the video that we released. They said the, the, the price, the, sorry, the length of time it could take would be between three to five years and not Q4 or, or 2023. So do be aware that it's possible they will actually take much longer um, you know, then anticipated, do go and check the video out that we posted uh, on the channel. I think it's here. Yes, there we go. Uh, let me just pause it very quickly so you can see. There you go. So as you can see from the actual pitch presentation that the CEO gave to investors, um, you know, it says actually probably going to be within the next five years. So do be aware of this because the website states that it would be by Q3 2023 for the Deca brick. Uh, and they say that it would be 2022 for the limited edition to, uh, to give to bloggers. So again, I, I, honestly, I honestly don't want to speculate. It, it is possible that they could do it before. I'm just saying that the date between what they say on the website and the actual date that they give in a pitch presentation is completely different. So if I were you, I'd be very cautious before you purchase this. I would actually perhaps uh, email or get in contact with Deca Gear and ask them whether it's potentially, uh, you know, potentially you could get your money back if you put any deposit down or what's going on. Because me, if it were me, I would want to know what's going, what's going on. I just, you know, it's just the way I am, but you do what you want. I'm just trying to provide you some, uh, you know, some, some, some preventive measures here. Now, lately there was the Apara headset, which is basically this one, Apara headset, which has been giving ways, uh, you know, uh, because certain influencers have been reviewing uh, the headset. So Apara. Okay, there we go. So it's basically this headset, which looks very neat, very small. Um, you know, it, it looks like really decent, cool gear, you know, in terms of how things are progressing in virtual reality. Of course, we want to see something like this eventually. We want uh, the HP, H HP Reverb G3 wireless standalone to be like this, or the next uh, Valve Index uh, wireless standalone to look like this, or whatever next headset to come out to look like this and be amazing. But guys, do be very aware that this company is still very new. We don't know who is funding them, by the way. Uh, we have no idea where the money is coming from. There's no way to backtrack and do a search about this company. So do be, do be very aware of this. First of all, if you don't know who the team is, if you don't know where the money is coming from, from, these are already red flags that you should definitely be asking yourself 
as to, okay, um, you know, who are these people? Where are they from? What's their background? Who's financing them? Uh, do they have millions of dollars to back them, like Apple, for example, or Samsung, or, you know, uh, Meta? <laughs> they have billions. Uh, you know, or HTC, or uh, HP, you know, or Canon, who are also wearing on, working on their own VR headset. You know, and all these kind of people... Because if they don't have the money, it could be a rug pull. It could be like they're just testing the waters, getting people's money. And that's how they're going to finance stuff. Look at Lynx. And the Lynx R1 is taken more than a year already in delays. Um, people have to be very patient. The fact is, if they're new startups and they don't have the backing that they need, I'm not saying, you know, don't back them because we do need progress in VR. Don't get me wrong. We do need to back companies. We do need to give them, uh, you know, benefit of doubt. I'm just saying, if they're Chinese companies and you don't know where they're from, um, then be more wary. You know, I mean, it doesn't have to be China. I mean, come on, let's not be biased here. I like China. I've lived in China. I know how Chinese co companies operate. But I'm just saying, do be cautious. If you don't know who the team is, you don't know where the money is coming from, uh, you don't know the previous history, it's not very transparent as to who they are and what they do. Be very cautious. These are red flags. So these are preventive measures. But now let's just transition over to the actual article that came out very recently, uh, written by Upload VR. For those who don't know, Upload VR are a trade magazine, one of the most reputable magazines um, that you can possibly have in VR today. Um, so let's just go through their article. I won't be back in our part. So the uh, headline is uh, why, why we are wary about a Paris Kickstarter fundraising campaign. I won't be backing our Paris Kickstarter fundraising campaign. And there are some concerning issues we should flag our community about as the project seeks money. The page on Kickstarter went public on December 14th, but we've seen hands-on reports from Cass and Cherry, who are very reputable YouTubers. Hi, Cass and Cherry, if you're watching the video. And VR Oasis, uh, who actually tried to test the company's hardware and the tweets give immediate pause. So Mike says, the pancake lens micro OLED displays an individual diopter adjustment is a nice combo. Completely agree with him there. It's amazing technology, it's very cool to have. It's light but seriously uncomfortable. Everything from software to build quality feels very cheap. Now, honestly speaking, I've seen other videos and there are some YouTubers who are quite biased. I'm gonna say this straight on, straight honestly. We know that Mike is very pro meta. Um, you know, all his videos, so most of his videos are all about meta. So it's very hard for someone like him to crush the competition in competing potentially with someone from meta. Very sorry, but that's my personal opinion. If you disagree, please leave a comment below. Love to open the discussion. I'm just saying that I've seen other YouTubers report the actual headset about the Alpara. And honestly speaking, it doesn't look that bad. It looks okay. Uh, of course, it's going to be plasticky and it's not going to cost so much money because they're not looking to create something that is for professional enterprise use. They're looking to create something that is for your VR day-to-day -day enthusiast that can plug into a phone, and that's about it. So yes, the build quality might not be as great as, let's say, an HP Reverb G2 or uh, a Valve Index, for sure. But honestly speaking, I've watched plenty of other reviews online, and it's not all that bad in terms of uh, build quality. But I do think, however, uh, what some YouTubers have reflected is the actual form factor. It may not shape your face properly because the face could be more for Asians rather than Westerners. So I think that's where there is a little bit of disconnect in terms of the form factor or the build factor of the actual VR headset. But the quality of the VR headset is perfectly, I would say, I mean, judging by what other people have said on the channel, it's perfectly fine. And MRTV, who is one of the most credible people in VR, he's tested every single thing as well, uh, has said that it's actually not that bad. But we're going to get into the into the things that he did say uh, need some improvements in just a moment. So I'm just trying to say that, you know, uh, Mike is a little bit, I would say, uh, bias when it comes to certain VR headsets that compete straight out of the box with something from Meta is my uh, is my personal opinion. I know people are desperate for a Facebook Meta alternative, but this isn't it. It's not good VR. Based on my experience, I would say be very careful with the upcoming Kickstarter. It reminds me of using the Oculus Go with Nolo to play Steam VR three years ago. Now on this part, however, I have personally tested the Nolo Gear, and yesterday or two days ago, we said we posted 
posted a video to say don't do this in VR and we have spoken about the Nolo gear do go and check it out it is very true that Nolo is not great it has a lot of latency it basically enables you to use a VR headset which doesn't have the ability to jump in VR walk in VR bend in VR it's just basically a display a factor to do all those things but it's a third party headset a third party piece of gear that you stick onto the actual VR headset so it is true that Nolo is not there and please do not buy any VR headsets that require Nolo gear unless uh, you just want to have a viewing experience in VR. You don't care about these big games where you get to bend and dock and all this kind of stuff. Um, you know, and you really feel like it's a real life in virtual reality. Then don't bother buying those kind of things. By the way, the Meta Facebook Go, Oculus Go, was an amazing VR headset. It was my first VR headset. Um, <laughs> it is the VR headset on the logo of VR Essentials. But at the end of the day, it was an amazing VR headset. The Oculus Go was my Go. I would still buy the Oculus Go if it wasn't owned by Meta today, simply because it's a great view viewing VR headset. It's great to travel with. It's very light. It's very compact. And it just offered a great VR experience. Leave a comment below if you disagree. I'd love to have this conversation with you as well. But at the end of the day, if the Nolo provides a Oculus Go VR experience, then it's a great VR experience, I'm very sorry to say, um, as a viewing headset, not as a full-fledged six degrees of freedom, real life alternative in a virtual reality world for sure um that's that's my point so again i'm just saying if it's an oculus go viewing experience then it might be just fine for you to watch some movies online or play very light games then it's perfectly fine if you're looking for blockbuster vr experience then of course stay the hell away from the Alpara or any other VR headset that don't provide what is called a six degrees or six dof vr reality experience all right let's go back to the article um okay so Cass and Cherry say update on our, our Power 5K video. Decided to delay it. There are some interesting things here, like the display and software, but this wouldn't matter uh, with the Nolo tracking as it's not good enough. They are sending us the Steam VR tracker in a few weeks. We will review it then. So basically, Steam VR have their own tracking system. However, the only issue with Steam VR tracking is that you need the base stations, you need extra gear, you need extra stuff. So unless you're a hardcore uh, virtual reality user, it's not for you. It's not going to be for you. Just not going to be for you. Uh, you know, the way the technology is going, guys, we're all about all-in-one tracking with all the cameras. For example, if I show you very quickly, on the HP Reverb G2, all the trackers are here, 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 and here, which basically means I don't need any external things, wires, things to put, to set up, to do anything around in order to have a really cool uh, VR experience. For the Pico Neo 3 Pro, same thing. Here, 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 and here. I don't need any additional wires or trackers or anything whatsoever, um, you know, to have a good enjoying experience in VR. And the next Valve Index, by the way, will most undoubtedly not require trackers, according to all the patents, that is. Um, you know, the next HP Reverb G2 will, or G3 will not require this. The Cambria, the next Meta's VR headset, will not require every single VR headset in the future, in 2022, that will be released, will not require base stations. So stay away from the Alpara for now, because you don't want to be buying additional Base stations which cost more money. You might as well save all that money and just buy a really good six degrees of freedom headset that won't require any base stations or anything of this sort. And also the Apara, it's going to be pretty expensive for just a viewing experience. So again, <laughs> no point buying the Apara just for that alone. Forget about build quality. Forget about three off. Forget about whatever. I'm just well, not three off because it'll be the same. It will be very expensive for three off experience. If the Apara was, let's say. Uh, excuse me, 150 US dollars, fine, consider it. But if it's going to cost 300, 400, 500 US dollars, no need, no need. All right, let's carry on. Let's stick to facts. Complications related to the continuing global pandemic are making the task of securing components and factory uh, 
components and manufacturing capacity challenging for some of the world's largest companies. So while backing any crowdfunding project is risky, essentially pre-ordering hardware in these conditions is even riskier than normal. Add to that the promise of these new VR headsets pitched as part of a Kickstarter campaign from a company with no obvious track record. What did I tell you guys? This is the first time that I'm reading this article, by the way. Um, that's more than a reasonable amount of risk to the money backers might put into this project. Decker Gear recently, as I just mentioned as well, cited price variations and component costs in changes to the prospects for its planned VR headset. And do remember that what I mentioned about Decker is that their uh, investor pitch isn't even aligned with what's on the website, which is a huge red flag. They should at least have the same information on the website as they do in their investor pitch is my point. The Apara pages list February 12, 2022 as the project ending date. And according to Kickstarter's policy, once a successful project has ended and collection has started, it is no longer possible to cancel your pledge. So do be very cautious about that. We don't have hands-on experience with any of the VR headsets. The Apara Kickstarter page estimates as shippable from March of 2022. There may still be time for us to try these devices before the end of the fundraising campaign will be at CES in January 2022. But given the things we flagged here, we believe it's unrealistic at best. This project fulfills its promises in a timely manner. Also, one of the Alpara headsets, supposedly all-in-one, was shown in a now deleted video posted to an account named Team Alpara. Low resolution through the lens footage in the video showed an interface reminding us of Meta's Quest. You can see some of these similarities in the screenshot below from the Alpara's Kickstarter page. But in the video, we even spotted a guardian system listed in systems in settings just like the meta quest now i just like would like to tell you guys that uh when it comes to this kind of stuff the chinese now everyone copies everybody okay western people copy western people the chinese copy the chinese and the western people i mean come on meta has copied absolutely everything in instagram in facebook and everything all right so let's not go there. But at the end of the day, um, it is very possible that what some of these companies are basically doing is they're going to manufacturers, first of all, um, that are manufacturing certain hardware that is being done in the market. And those manufacturers go and say, look, this is what we have available. This is what we did for Meta. This is what we did for, uh, for, for Pico. This is what we did for HP. Because they go to the same manufacturers to try and just pay the money and change the name, uh, the marketing on the actual headset. It's basically it. So you could come up with a brand new design, work with the manufacturer who's worked with Meta, who's worked with Pico, who's worked with HP and other people and say, no problem, we can do it smaller. We'll just use the parts that we did in other things and boom, you have what you need. Same thing for the software. You can go to the manufacturers who may not have some clauses or who could go through the back door and change slightly the graphics and all this kind of stuff. Say, this is what we've done for these people. Boom, we can put it in your VR headset, is my point. So this is very, very possible. And I'll tell you why also, because I personally went to China when I wanted to do some certain different products. I was trying to do foldable, foldable mobile phones back in the day and I went to do some research and believe me they told me this is what we did for Samsung we can do the exact same thing for you uh, VR, uh, last year because my name's last year I wasn't as VR essentials at the time and we could do the exact same thing but we'll change this and that because otherwise we may get flagged in uh, trademark you know things and, and all that kind of stuff so I'm just saying that you can jolly well go to a manufacturer and get the same parts the same technology done by a competitor just tweaked and changed here and there so that it fits your personal, um, you know, your 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 personal requirements. It's my point. So at the end of the day, um, if something looks exactly the same in another VR headset, that's up to them. I don't care about that. If they get, but they could get sued and they could be asked to take things down and all that kind of stuff. So do be cautious. Also, if things do look too similar to a competitor, because Meta won't hesitate to sue them in China. And uh, let, let me let you know that there are Western companies who have sued other companies in China and won, including Lego, who took another company to court in China, even though Lego are not Chinese, because they felt that that company was basically copying the Lego trademark and they won, Lego won. So 
Just to let you know, so do be very aware, it's not because people are behind the proxy firewall that they are automatically safe. No, they can still lose in court if they're taken to court by a Western-based company that don't have offices in that country. So I just want you to uh, be aware of this. Now let's go, let's transition over and go to the uh, video that, um, you know, uh, Mr. MRTB, Sebastian Ong. Hi, Sebastian, if you're watching this video today. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole video. You can go and watch his video. Please go to his comments if you watch the video and, you know, just leave a comment there. Say, hey, we came from VR Essentials. Uh, you know, they told us to come and check out your video to check out what you, you had to say about the Opara um, Steam VR tracking. Now, basically what, what he says, he basically said, first of all, let's talk about the good. He said it's good form factor, not a bad headset whatsoever, and has very good clarity to the point that is better than the HP Reverb G2, guys. So first of all, however, what he did say is, you do need the base stations. That's a big no-no. And also he said that uh, when you move your head and you look up or you look down, you will get a lot of, well, he didn't use these words, but basically the translation is, you will have a lot of chromatic aberration, which basically means that the pixels um, or the color of the pixels will basically change so you will see the bleeding of the pixels up on the upper part of the lenses and also on the below part of the lenses i believe it's also on the sides basically so the 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 the, the amount of sweet spot that you have for no chromatic aberration is low so the comparison between the hp reverb t2 is that you have a sweet spot for 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 clear non blurry non 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 blurry clarity okay which is quite small to some people although for me i have no issues however for the Alpara, it's not blurriness it's chromatic aberration which is bleeding of the actual uh, lenses which basically means it's going to be pretty much like a pico neo uh, 2 that would be my best comparison because the Pico Neo 2 has a lot of chromatic aberration. You can definitely see a lot of colors bleeding uh, on the sides of the VR headset. So it will basically give you motion sickness. It will make you feel dizzy and it's a big no-no. The other thing that I would like to point out in MRTB Sebastian Ang's video about the Alpara is that it took him more than an hour to get the frigging thing to work on your um, on, 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 on Half-Life Alex. It took him an hour to get it to work. So I, I, I'm not quite sure why. He had a lot of problems. So just be very aware that it did not work straight out of the box. It took him a lot, of, a lot of experimenting, a lot of things going on before it actually worked. And then finally, what I would like to point out about the Alpara uh, that you may want to, to be aware of is the fact that there are no games inside. You need to plug in the cable to go to Steam. So why, what's the point spending so much money in a, in, a, in a headset if you need to plug in a cable? Just because it's small? I don't know. I mean, at the end of the day, the HP, the HP Reverb G2 is, is, is light enough. It's perfectly light enough not to have any issues in VR, guys. It is light enough. Okay, it's 400 or whatever plus kilos. This headset performs really well without the cable streaming to your PC. And there are tons of apps inside. You can still write to, 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 uh, to Pico, to ByteDance if you want it. They're not gonna deny you from a headset. Why would they deny you 600 US dollars if you want a headset? Why, for, for what, why, because you're not a company? No, they'll be more than happy to send you a headset and this is not meta. Your privacy is safe with ByteDance because ByteDance don't leak the data. They have the data in the US and Singapore, not China, they're perfectly safe. ByteDance is perfectly safe for your data. They have no bad reputation. So I'm just saying, Opara, your data will not be safe because it's based in China. Their servers are in China, by the way. I forgot to mention that. So there you go. These, these are the reasons why you definitely want to shy away from a Decker gear because the Decker gear, the, 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 the pricing is not aligned with 
um, you know, with, with, with what they say in the presentation and what they have on the website. It's not aligned with it. To me, that's a huge red flag. So until they align the pricing, I'd be very wary. Uh, and also, sorry, not the pricing, not the pricing. My apologies. The when it will be released by. They say 2022 on the website, but the investor pitch says within the next five years. I'm just sticking to facts, guys. Just sticking to facts. And for the Apara, you know nothing about them. You don't know where they're from. You don't know where the, the money's coming from. By the way, Decker Gear is the same thing. We don't know where the money's coming from. There isn't really a backstory uh, to, to where they are. So I'm just saying, you know, do your research first. Uh, and for Apara, um, again, you need the cable to hook up to the, to the thing. Otherwise, you need Nolo to the PC. Otherwise, you need Nolo, but Nolo is no good. Uh, if you want to have the Steam VR tracking, you need base stations. It's going to cost you so much money. Forget it. Forget it. It's not worth your money. Get your money out right now is my advice to you. Um, or just wait until they have another version where it's, you know, wait until they've come out in the market. They have a headset. You got good reviews. They have internal tracking inside. It's a good cheap, it's a good cheap price or competitive price. Just wait. Don't be so rushed because these companies are going to give virtual reality a bad name in our industry. A lot of people out there have never tried VR, guys. So please, 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 please be careful. Please be careful. Better to spend an extra two, three hundred dollars on a really good headset by a good brand that's established than trying to money pinch and drip your money. Then you're going to end up having to buy another VR headset and boom, you spent a thousand US dollars already on two VR headsets. One you can't even use, it just stays on the shelf. All right, guys, thank you very much for watching today's video. I hope it helped and I will see you in another video very soon, very soon. All right, guys, take it easy. Goodbye.